Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the intriguing and haunting tale of Kuru disease. This forgotten neurodegenerative disorder has a mysterious history that unveils a fascinating link between culture, science, and the human brain. So, let's embark on a journey to understand what Kuru disease is all about. What is Kuru disease? Kuru disease is a rare and fatal neurodegenerative disorder. It was found among the four people in Papua New Guinea and was linked to their ritualistic cannibalism, where they consumed the brains of deceased relatives. The disease is caused by abnormal prion proteins that accumulate in the brain, leading to symptoms like tremors, loss of muscle control, and cognitive decline. History of Kuru Disease Early History Kuru disease was first observed among the four people of Papua New Guinea. The four people practiced ritualistic cannibalism, where they consumed the brains of deceased relatives as part of funeral rites. This practice was believed to show respect and strengthen the bonds between the living and the dead. 1950s. Discovery and Investigation. In the 1950s, medical professionals noticed a significant increase in neurological disorders within the four community. Researchers, including Daniel Carlton Gajasek, investigated these cases and began to suspect a connection between the cannibalistic practices and the emergence of the mysterious disease. 1960s. Identification of Kuru. Gajasek and his team meticulously studied the disease and discovered its link to prions, misfolded proteins that trigger healthy proteins to misfold as well, leading to brain damage. This groundbreaking research earned Gajasek the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1976. 1970s onward. Changing practices and decline. As the medical and scientific communities raised awareness about the risks of cannibalism and the transmission of Kuru, the four people gradually abandoned their traditional practices. This shift, along with improved healthcare and education, contributed to a decline in Kuru cases. Today, Kuru disease serves as a remarkable case study that bridges cultural anthropology, medical science, and the unraveling of the mysteries of the human brain. About Causal Agent of Kuru Disease? The causal agent of Kuru disease is abnormal prion proteins. Prions are misfolded versions of a normal cellular protein called PRP, prion protein. In healthy individuals, PRP proteins are present in a folded, functional form. However, in cases of prion diseases like Kuru, these proteins become misfolded and adopt an abnormal shape. When misfolded prion proteins come into contact with normal PRP proteins, they have the ability to induce the normal proteins to also misfold into the abnormal conformation. This sets off a chain reaction, leading to the accumulation of misfolded prion proteins in the brain. These aggregations of abnormal proteins interfere with normal brain function, causing neurodegeneration and the characteristic symptoms of Kuru, such as tremors, loss of coordination, and cognitive decline. How Kuru Disease Transmitted Kuru disease primarily transmitted through the consumption of infected neural tissue, particularly the brain, from individuals already affected by the disease. The most common mode of transmission in the past was through the ritualistic cannibalism practiced by the four people of Papua New Guinea. As part of their funeral rituals, they would consume the brains of deceased relatives, believing it to be a way to honor and absorb their qualities. The infected brain tissue contains abnormal prion proteins. These misfolded prion proteins can induce normal cellular prion proteins to misfold as well, leading to the accumulation of the abnormal prions in the brain. This accumulation of abnormal prion proteins disrupts normal brain function and leads to the neurological symptoms characteristic of Kuru, such as tremors, loss of muscle coordination, and cognitive decline. The act of consuming infected brain tissue introduced the misfolded prion proteins into the body of the consumer, where they could then initiate the process of protein misfolding and accumulation. This created a cycle of transmission within the four community, contributing to the prevalence of Kuru. It's important to note that the transmission of Kuru through cannibalism was specific to the cultural practices of the four people and the conditions of their society. With the cessation of cannibalism and improved healthcare practices, the transmission of Kuru has significantly decreased, making it an exceedingly rare disease today. Pathogenicity of Kuru Disease Prion Accumulation The primary event in Kuru's pathogenicity is the accumulation of misfolded prion proteins in the brain. These abnormally folded proteins have the unique ability to induce other normally folded prion proteins to adopt the same misfolded conformation. This process sets off a chain reaction where more and more prion proteins become misfolded. Interference with Brain Function As misfolded prion proteins accumulate, they interfere with the normal functioning of brain cells. The accumulation disrupts neural connections, affects communication between neurons, and impairs overall brain function. This disruption leads to the neurological symptoms seen in Kuru, such as muscle tremors, loss of coordination, and cognitive decline. Neurodegeneration Over time, the disruption caused by the accumulation of misfolded prion proteins leads to the degeneration of brain tissue. Nerve cells and their connections are damaged, leading to the progressive deterioration of motor and cognitive abilities. 
this neurodegeneration is responsible for the severe disability and ultimately fatal outcome of the disease. Lack of immune response. One notable aspect of prion diseases like Kuru is that the immune system often struggles to recognize and clear the misfolded prion proteins. This is due to the fact that the misfolded prions closely resemble the normal prion proteins found in the body. As a result, the immune system's response to these abnormal proteins is limited, allowing their accumulation to persist. Symptoms of Kuru disease. Tremors. Individuals with Kuru often experience involuntary tremors, which are rhythmic, shaking movements of the limbs or other parts of the body. Loss of muscle coordination. A hallmark of Kuru is ataxia, which refers to a loss of muscle coordination and control. This can lead to unsteady gait, difficulty walking in a straight line, stumbling, and a general lack of balance. Difficulty swallowing and speaking. As the disease progresses, individuals may have difficulty swallowing, dysphagia, which can result in choking or aspiration of food or liquids. Additionally, speech may become slurred or difficult to understand due to the loss of muscle coordination in the muscles used for speech. Muscle weakness. Weakness in the muscles of the limbs and trunk can develop, making simple movements challenging. This contributes to the overall loss of mobility and function. Cognitive decline. Individuals with Kuru may experience cognitive impairments, including memory problems, difficulty concentrating, and changes in behavior and personality. These cognitive changes can have a significant impact on daily functioning. Emotional disturbances. Mood swings, emotional instability, and depression can also occur as the disease affects brain function. Paralysis. In the later stages of Kuru, Individuals may experience muscle paralysis, rendering them unable to move or perform basic activities. Severe disability. As the disease progresses, the combination of symptoms leads to severe disability. Death. Kuru is ultimately fatal. The combination of neurological dysfunction and physical debilitation typically leads to a significantly shortened lifespan, often within a few years of symptom onset. How Kuru disease can be diagnosed. Clinical assessment. A thorough clinical examination is conducted to evaluate the individual's symptoms and neurological status. The presence of symptoms such as tremors, muscle coordination problems, and cognitive decline raises suspicion for a neurodegenerative disorder like Kuru. Medical history. Gathering a detailed medical history is essential. Information about the individual's background, any exposure to ritualistic cannibalism or consumption of infected brain tissue, and familial history can help establish a potential link to Kuru. Neuroimaging. Brain imaging techniques like magnetic resonance imaging MRI, are computed tomography court, scans may be used to assess the brain's structure and look for any characteristic patterns of degeneration. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis. A lumbar puncture, spinal tap, can provide cerebrospinal fluid CSF, samples for analysis. CSF analysis may reveal elevated levels of certain proteins associated with prion diseases. Electroencephalogram. EEG. EEG measures the brain's electrical activity and can help identify abnormal patterns consistent with prion diseases like Kuru. Prion protein detection. Laboratory tests are conducted to detect abnormal prion proteins in tissue samples, such as brain tissue obtained post-mortem. What could be the possible treatment for Kuru disease? There is no specific cure for Kuru disease. Since Kuru is a prion disease characterized by the accumulation of misfolded proteins in the brain, it presents unique challenges for treatment. However, some supportive measures can be taken to manage the symptoms and improve the quality of life for individuals with Kuru which may include medications, physical therapy, speech therapy, nutritional support and pain management. Preventive measures for Kuru disease. Here are some key measures that contributed to the prevention of Kuru. Cessation of cannibalism. One of the most effective ways to prevent Kuru was the abandonment of cannibalistic practices by the four people. Education and awareness. Educating communities about the risks of consuming infected neural tissue played a crucial role in preventing the transmission of Kuru. Improved healthcare. Access to improved healthcare services, including medical diagnosis and treatment, contributed to a decline in Kuru cases. Safe burial practices. Encouraging safe burial practices that do not involve the consumption of brain tissue is essential for preventing transmission of Kuru and other potential infections. Research and collaboration. Collaborative efforts between scientists, healthcare professionals, anthropologists, and the affected communities help to understand the disease's transmission mechanisms and implement effective prevention strategies. Monitoring and surveillance. Ongoing monitoring and surveillance of communities at risk, along with early detection and intervention, can prevent potential resurgences of Kuru or similar diseases. Conclusion. The story of Kuru disease is a testament to the power of scientific inquiry, cross-cultural understanding, and the indomitable human spirit. It reminds us that every disease, no matter how baffling, has an underlying cause waiting to be uncovered. Kuru also underscores the importance of respecting and preserving cultural traditions, even as we learn and evolve. 
Today, Kuru is exceedingly rare due to the changes in behavior and increased awareness. However, for prion diseases in general, which can also arise sporadically or through other routes, continued research and public health efforts are necessary to minimize the risk of transmission. And there you have it, the enigmatic tale of Kuru disease, a journey from cultural practices to scientific breakthroughs. If you found this exploration as fascinating as I did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating insights into the world of science and history. Until next time, stay curious.